on this episode, we talk about putting the holidays into perspective. Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. Welcome to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm Chris Shea, your host and the founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. And here we are with another podcast episode under the new format. So I hope that you enjoyed the first episode. And for those of you just tuning in, what does the new format mean? Well, in this new format, what we are doing is talking more on specific topics. We're asking for your input as to what those topics are. And we now have a Patreon page. So, two purposes to that page. Uh, One, you could probably guess putting a podcast together is not free. So, we do need some... Uh, money coming in for the podcast so if this is a podcast that you enjoy and get something out of would really appreciate you going over to the patreon page and becoming a member but the other point of that page is to give you guys things so i'm not just asking for freebies if you want to support this page and you want to put out uh, some of your hard-earned, well-deserved money toward this podcast, then in return, I will give you things. So depending on the level that you are contributing uh, will depend on what it is that you are getting uh, from this podcast. So give it a uh, look, see what it is that you can do for us, and uh, then I will also, in return, do for you. Uh, the address to that is over on the show notes page, uh, but it's just uh, heading over to patreon.com and then searching on Finding Peace. All right. So this one may be uh, a little bit shorter than some of our other episodes, only because... Um, you know, the holidays are here, and I know all of us are busy, so having you guys listen to a full-length podcast may be a lot to ask, and uh, definitely me trying to work on a full-length podcast um, with the holidays um, fast approaching is, is kind of difficult. Uh, there's a lot going on right now in my life, not just getting ready for the uh uh, Christmas Day, and you know, dealing with family and children and grandchildren, but also uh, with my business, Life's Journey, uh, and a lot of things to close out the year, start the new year. Uh, we're looking on some expansion on that end and uh, offering some more programming. So, more on that on the webpage, um, and that webpage is also on the show notes. But if you uh, want to go right to the page, it is lifesjourneyblog.com. And over on that blog, you will uh, find everything you need to find about what Life's Journey offers, as well as um, all the ways to contact me, plus a link to the store. Now, if you don't mind, one quick second. Let's do a quick advertisement here. Because with the holidays coming, 
and you may be short a gift or so and want to know, what am I going to do? I need a gift. And maybe even that big name store, which I'm not going to give them free press right now, but that big name store that says we'll get it to you in a day or two days, maybe you're running up on the end of that. Don't fear. Go over to my website, lifesjourneyblog.com. There you can find the, the uh, link to my store. And over at the store, not only are there gifts that you can get emailed to you instantly, but there's also gift certificates. So if you know someone who could use some life coaching, you know, just to kind of set some life goals, get around maybe a barrier that they've uh, recently hit, then a gift certificate might be the answer. And that's over on the uh, store. And I can get you that gift certificate before Christmas. So I will have that emailed to you, and then you can print it and give it to uh, your loved one. That would make a wonderful gift for someone um, and something you don't have to worry about shipping. So there you go. We aim to please. But, you know, all of this talk brings me into the topic of keeping perspective on the holidays. And the last couple uh, articles that I placed on the website, you know, deal with this. You know, how do we deal with the stress of the holidays? Um, you know, how do we slow down during the holidays? Now, when I talk about this holiday period, I'm not talking in any particular uh, religious or non-religious bent. You know, we know this is the holiday season. We know that multiple um, religions, multiple cultures celebrate very differently. And all of that is great. So I'm happy for all the celebrations, and I wish you all the best in all of your celebrations. But regardless of what your belief is or is not or how you celebrate this time of the year, the point still is it's a very hectic time of the year. I just wanted to talk about one thing about, you know, placing this time of the year into perspective. And that's the word that I want to use is perspective. You know, many of us have expectations of what this time of the year should be like. Many families and many of our traditions place these expectations upon us. So when we're looking at these expectations, it seems to put a high level of achievement, a high level of making sure that what we do equals previous years. And that's a fine goal to have as long as it is a realistic goal. And when I talk about the perspective is maybe we need to shift our traditions and our approach to this season and give it a whole different perspective. Now, I know many people at this time of the year talk about getting away from the commercialization of the season, and I'm not going to go on and on about that, although I agree. Now, do I like to receive a gift? Sure. You all want to go and donate to Patreon for this podcast as a gift to me at the holidays? Please go for it. But what is the real meaning of this season? Now again, since I know that many of you listening are of many different cultures and religious traditions, when I talk about the meaning of this season, let's look in a very large picture of this. Because the season was never meant to be a commercial time of the year. The season was really meant to be, from its inception, a time to spend with family, a time to spend with loved ones, a time to take stock of, perspective of, what does it really mean for us in our lives? You know, this is the natural time of the year with the winter solstice, when the days after the 21st, which is actually the day I'm recording this, the longest night of the year, that from this moment forward, the days get a little bit longer. We get a little bit more daylight. A little bit of daylight each day as we work toward the summer 
also gives us hope. We know that the period of darkness, the period of um, winter, for whatever it means in, in your area of the world, will soon come to an end. That has a lot of hope in it. And that's what I want to share with all of you in the sense of the perspective. What does that hope do to us when we try to shift a perspective? So that what becomes most important, is it the commercialization? Is it the gifts that I get? Is it feeling down for the gifts that I don't get? Is it the beating myself up because I didn't meet the expectations of my family during the season? Or is it more important to say, but the family is together, that I'm with my loved ones, and that what becomes more important in our life are those non-commercial items. You know, I love technology and I love things, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I live without things, but what I am saying is, it's in the things, that commercialization, all of the objects that we like to buy, that complicate and can stress our lives. You know, when you think about it, if you have to travel somewhere, and it might even just be traveling to work, think of all the things that you need to bring with you to support what it is that you want to do in that day. So if you're going to bring a laptop or a tablet, your phone, how many different cords and wires and plugs and outlets do you have to remember to bring? Or did you bring all the USB uh, equipment that you need? Did you bring all the adapters that you might need? What if your items weren't charged? What are you going to do now when you get to work? See, all of these things build upon each other. So that one thing means I need another thing, another thing, another thing. This is going to cause stress. And if we're looking for a way to find some peace in our lives, I'm not necessarily advocating that we get rid of all of our things, but that we put our things into perspective. In the sense that how can I maybe get rid of those unnecessary things and stick with those things which are more necessary versus the things that I just want or would be nice. How do I begin to declutter my life, which will then simplify my life? You know, for an example, um, I turn to one of my favorite people in history, and that's uh, St. Francis of Assisi. And for those who don't know much about him, he is a uh, Catholic preacher and monk back in the 11, 1200s who gave up everything he owned and lived a life of complete poverty. I mean, he ends up not owning a thing. And he starts getting some followers. Some people start to say, hey, we want to live like you're living because you, you seem to be happy. But at some point, one of his followers said, you know, we have absolutely nothing. Wouldn't it be nice for us to get a few books so that if we had some books, then maybe we could learn a few things? Now, Francis himself was not against learning, but he used this opportunity to explain to them the importance of not gathering things. Because his reply is, we can get a book, but if we get a book, where are we going to put that book? We need a place to store the book so that the book stays safe. That means we're probably going to have to build a building. And if we build a building to put the book in, we're going to have to make sure that when we're not around, that book remains safe. So we may have to put some locks on that building. And then once we put the locks on the building and people get suspicious of what's in a locked building, we may have to hire some people to keep an eye on that building. His point being, this one book is going to cost us the monies of building a building, of securing the building, securing that object. And then his other point in this was, when we are then away doing whatever ministry that we're doing, 
Is your mind going to be focused on what it is that you're doing for others? Or are you going to be focused on that object? Is that object safe? Is there raining? Is the building leaking? Is the object getting wet? Oh, what if somebody broke in? What if this? What if that? So let's take this in a modern day and start thinking in the way that we do with our objects. You know, isn't it true that once we accumulate some objects, that might mean we accumulate debt? And the more debt that we accumulate means the more we may have to work. And the more we may have to work takes us away from our family. One of the things we also have to look at is what becomes more important. Am I more focused on family, loved ones, you know, my higher power, if, if you so believe? Or are these objects and things more important to me? I'm just throwing out the question, again, I'm not saying that I live a life of poverty, I'm not saying that I don't have things because I do. What I'm challenging us to do is how do we refocus ourselves on these things so that the things don't become our priority. What becomes my priority as I shift perspective this holiday season? Where do my things fit in a hierarchy of loved ones and family and things? At what level are they? And am I being honest with myself when I answer that question? So that's my challenge. So as we look at this holiday season, and I hope that everyone enjoys uh, however it is that you celebrate this time of the year, but at the same time, I offer that challenge that as you try to find hope and joy and peace within this season, take some moments, step back, relax, take some deep breaths, and be thankful and grateful for what you do have in terms of loved ones, family, and friends. So again, may you all have a most wonderful and blessed holiday season. And as always, have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. And I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening. And have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.